Eifto. Blond, 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 blond. Eifto. Um, whilst we wait for Tony, I'm sure you'd like to um, have a few words with. Uh, is he here? Yeah, a wee test. A wee test, right. Well, um, whilst, whilst we're waiting, have a word with uh, Nathan and his father and trainer Vince, who've done a fabulous job. Good job tonight, guys. Um, I'm going to hear some. Sure you've got questions to ask. <coughs> yeah, and I think ultimately, you know, I knew this was going to be a, one of my hardest fights because even though all the hype in the press, um, in the press conferences, what's been said, the thing is, you've got Tony's one of the hungriest fighters in in boxing, really. Definitely in British boxing. You know, he's probably one of the best trainers out there. Trains his heart off. Um, and uh, as you saw tonight, he puts everything on the line and he had a massive crowd behind him, you know, they were cheering every shot that he threw. Um, but ultimately I wanted to prove that I was a worthy world champion and come into a dangerous opponent's backyard <coughs> and win. You know, I, it, it was a fight that I, I didn't have to take. Um, I could have gone another route, really. But I wanted, I wanted to give the fans the fight they wanted to see. You know, it was everyone calling for this fight. And I think TV really wanted the fight as well after all the press conferences. Um, so I thought, you know, let's get it on. And do we want it in Wales or do we do it in Liverpool? But the, the best arena for the fight was the Echo Arena with the capacity. Um, and we knew it'd be an automatic sell, so we thought, let's, let's go up there and show I'm a, pro I'm a true world champion. It seemed genuine bad blood in, in the build up to this fight you know, earlier in the year, but at the end, I don't know, there seems to be a small handshake. Is that gone now? Is it? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's gone. You know, I think, obviously, I think Tony underestimated how good I was, really. Um, I think he thought I was going to crumble under his power punches. I, I, I really think he thought that. Um, whereas I, I knew otherwise. And obviously, I, I said a few things back, I bit, and I said a few things back to Tony. Um, but ultimately, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. That's why I trained hard, um, and obviously got the got the victory dead deep. You know, because Tony threw everything at me. Had a, had a great following, and they got behind him. And you know, no way was he going to give in. I think at times he felt like, but he kept pushing out um, and made a hard night's work for me. But you know, deep down, I was enjoying it. You know, I was enjoying slugging it out and and, and just. Putting on a true, true fight in display. Do you see yourself, well, Frank McCarthy as well as yourself. Do you see yourself doing it again next year at some stage? Yeah, you know, it's, it's potentially a fight that could happen again. Um, I think my next next stage is I'd like a unification fight with uh, uh, Baby Chumanov. He's the WBA champion. Um, I'd like to become a unified light heavyweight champion of the world. I think Tony mentioned the European title, he'd, he'd like to go for that. Um, so yeah, it's a fight that potentially could happen in the future. So, um, what about the winner of tonight's fight again? That, that, that'd be possible next year talking about if, um, <coughs> if Hopkins wins, and I think it's a tough fight he's got tonight, he used to win. Um, what a big fight that'd be at Millennium Stadium next uh, next year. He's not even ready for that yet, Frank. I think so. I've got to tell you something, you know, <coughs> you, that fight tonight, I mean, there were rounds there where the two of them were throwing jabs and it was just world-class. I mean, it was world-class boxing from both of them. Yeah. And they both got themselves in, I think, in a real, not just a, a, a you know, great physical condition, but mentally as well to sustain what they did. The pace that that fight was fought at was amazing. As soon as the first bell went, the guys were out. They were, you know, they got straight down to it. And even when they were trading, when the <coughs> sort of boxing, their sort of boxing um, brains went out the window and they, and they were throwing bombs at each other, they both showed they got, we, we know Tony Bellow can punch, we know Nathan can punch, they both took good shots. And I think that was the, that was because how intense the fight was, the, the adrenaline level, you know, when, when guys seem to, t you know, can, can take a better shot than you would normally think, and the desire that, you know, neither of them wanted to lose. And I just, and I, and I would, you know, if Hopkins was to win, He's got the key to beat Hopkins, mm. and the way you beat Hopkins is speed. The same way as Joe Kawasaki beat him, yeah. speed, letting your shots go. He's a great fighter, Bernard Hopkins, 
and it'd be interesting tonight to see you know what happens with Chad Dawson because Chad Dawson is fast, he can box, and it depends how he how he approaches that fight. Carl Zaghi told me himself. He said he thinks that I could beat Hopkins because of he, he wouldn't like my type of style. No. He's told me that himself. You know, he's, obviously he's been in in the ring with him. He's he's told me he said he wouldn't like your style. So you know, I think I think I'd have the style to give him problems. Um, Hopkins will probably he'll give anybody problems though, but. You know, it's a, it's a fight that, uh, that could happen next. If not, like I said, Schumer off the WBA title, I think that'd be a good step as well. No Dawson, yeah. Yeah, he, he could win. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got he, he, he's got fast he's hands. Take the ball back. If, if he if he's not lazy, he, he you know he could pull off a victory. So, but yeah. it's but it's you know the uh, I thought tonight for me was one of the best championship fight I've seen fights I've seen for years. It was a quality fight, you know. Right to the end. I mean, ferocious pace they fought that. I mean, it was just uh, that, that, that's a testament to both of them. It's, just, it's one of those where obviously you've got to have a winner, but it's a shame, they were, shame that there there was a, a loser. And I think Tony Bellew takes a lot away from this. I think he's put, you know he, you know think how many fights he's had, and I think he's put himself in the in the picture now for a for a crack of uh, of another title, which I will I'll make it happen. For. What did you make the scorecards? Tell me what they were. 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, 114, was a bit way I knew uh, Tony was going to be dangerous early. You know, I'm strong, big, strong, light heavyweight, big, big for the weight, big puncher. Tony put on me early and um, established his power, which he did. Um, but it's important at this stage of my career, if you, if you get hit with a shot, you know, you mustn't fluster, you just got to compose yourself. You know, just soak it up, ride a few shots, and, and come back with your own. And, um, you know, that's what, was, that's what I done, didn't fluster, just um, showed a bit of experience and uh, come back with, with shots of my own. Tony, you must obviously be good yeah. to lose, but you've got to be proud of that before, surely. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just didn't listen enough to my coaches and for that I can only apologise, but listen, I went in there and uh, I just done, you know, I was doing what was coming natural a lot of the time and I was looking to pick shots a bit more and maybe I didn't throw enough, as many punches as we'd done in training but I take my hat off to him, he throws a lot of punches and he hits you with a lot of shots and you know, they come from different angles so, well you know, I don't think it was ever five rounds and I think Nathan knows I don't think ever it was that wide and, and that's disgusting to have it that wide but I still give him credit and he's a good champion and, and well done to him, you know, he throws a lot of punches and Fair play, just sickening and looking at that belt and but you know, listen, you're a good champion and I've got lots of respect, well done. Thank you. Well done. And what about next for you, Tony? I mean, yeah. Um, listen, well, this man on left, this yeah, man. I'll, 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 yeah, before you come in, I've said this. John Murray's just been knocked out and you know, and now he's fighting possibly one of the best lightweights in the world for the world title, so I haven't had a fight nowhere near as drastic a loss as that. And, I think, you know, if you look at the bookies and, and the media, I think one guy tipped me, Kevin Francis, I'm not sure if he's in here, but thanks for tipping me. But uh, listen, it's just, it's one of them things, you, you win some, you lose some, and, and it's, it's just, you can't win them all, you know what I mean? But I think me, me I've grown tonight, and yes. I've learned from it, and, and no one expected me to be able to box or do the way I've done, but I still didn't fulfil my potential, and I can only apologise to my coaches and my kids, and it's just one of them things. What were they saying to you then? They were telling me, and I was, you know, I was trying to throw more punches, and what we'd worked on in camp was, was pressing Nathan. He's, he's great on the front foot, and we knew that going in. He's a, he's a front foot fighter. He's, he's, he's throws a lot of punches when you let him come forward, but it was crazy from round nine. I felt like he was tiring, and he was trying to take breaks, but to be fair, I think he was trying to show me that he could box on the back foot. Something I said he, he couldn't do, and he was trying to show me he could do that from the ninth round, and... I think that's where I was starting to steal rounds, where he was expected to come on and jump on me. He chose to box me and, and move away, and they were the rounds I think that I made it closer. But like I kept saying, you know, he, he's shown now, 
he's not a one-dimensional fighter. He can do he can do different things in the ring, and he's a good champion. He's a good fighter. I've got respect, and you know if, if we can go further down the line, like I said, this is far from the end for me. But I will take half from someone like Nigel Ben getting stopped by Michael Watson, and and you know coming back and fighting the fighters he did, and he's an idol of mine. So you know if he can do it, then there's no reason why someone like me can't do it. So would you like a rematch at some point? Oh, listen, that. Yeah, it's boxing is about money, and the reason I'm in this is to secure my kids' future and make a better life for them. So if if this is what makes the most financial sense, then I'll fight anyone. I'll fight you. I'll fight him on the same night if it makes more finance. <laughs> if, if it makes more financial sense, you know what I mean. But you know, my manager here and my promoter and my friend, he holds a lot of keys and he can open a lot of doors for me. So I've just got to fight whoever's put in front of me, and I'm. Try and make the best out of what I can because listen, boxing's all I know. It's all I've got, and this is what I do for a living, mate. I don't know anything else but boxing, and this is what I've got to do. What's happened to bad luck between you? Listen, it's hype. It sells tickets. Makes money. And well, that, I believed it. That's what. <laughs> yeah. no, listen, look, look by it. no, listen, it was there. It was very good for me. I was like, as it so. <coughs> It's, fellas, it's no. Yourself, you know. It's no. Listen, if you're gonna have a fight with somebody, you can't. How can you like them before he's there to do me damage? How can you possibly like somebody who's there to hit you in the face hard? You can't possibly. <laughs> if I say to you, listen, I'm gonna knock the fuck out of you. You're not gonna say to me, well, let's be mates, eh? and then we knock the fuck out of each other. You're gonna say I can't stand you, I hate you. Then we're gonna knock the fuck out of each other. But after something like that, you gain respect. <laughs> you gain respect, and, and I think we are new. Listen, we've met many years ago. And we got chatting at the Kalzaghi Kessler do. We got talking. We knew each other. He knew me. I knew him before we'd even come across Pats. And we, we spoke then because he was a super middleweight and I was a light heavyweight. And then it started. Once he beat Tony Oki, I knew he was on the radar. And then I'd watched him, studied him. And that was it. It just grew from there. But the people are going on a bit much. I hate him. I don't hate anybody. Hate's far too strong of a word. You know, it's done with it. Just... It is what it is, and the respect was always there. Kid's a clever individual, and I respect any any man who gets through ropes, and I respect any man who took what he took tonight and then come back and give me my lumps too. I feel blunt, blunt, blunt. I feel blunt, blunt, blunt.